Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier here with Shai Molan, Senior Vice President of Product and Strategy at Rubrik here in the CUBE. Thanks for coming in today. Great to see you. Pleasure, John. Pleasure so, to see you. So big news, you joined Rubrik, Senior Vice President. Last time we spoke to you in the CUBE, you were at Splunk, and then you did a stint at MuleSoft, very famous public company, sold to Salesforce for massive amounts of money. Now you're here at Rubrik. Thanks uh, for coming on. What's the story? What happened? Well, you know, um, Bipple, our founder and I met uh, a few years ago. We were introduced, uh, I guess it was about two and a half years ago. I was uh, running product management and product marketing at Splunk at the time. And he just impressed me with his vision of what he was trying to do with Rubrik. The company was significantly smaller than it is today. And uh, talked about his vision to really disrupt this, you know, $30 billion market. And do it in a way that was very cloud-based, revolutionary, allow companies to extract much bigger value out of this secondary uh, storage arena. And uh, I thought, wow, sound, sounds exciting. But at the time I was just about to take a bigger role at Splunk, my timing was off. And so it didn't work out, but we kept in touch. And um, we touched base again early this year. And I was just so impressed by what he had accomplished with Rubrik in less than four years uh, from zero to 300 million run rate uh, the executives that he assembled around the company, the progress that the business had made, the customers, the expansion into the cloud arena, the innovation, it was just uh, one of those opportunities you can't walk away from, and so I, I jumped on it. It's a classic Silicon Valley enterprise story. If you look at the funding, he's been on theCUBE, so the folks watching, check out the CUBE video on YouTube or thecube.net, uh, Bitpool CEO, founder of uh, Rubrik, great interview. But it's interesting, I mean, there's a lot of money thrown at Rubrik, they're growing like crazy. It's the classic rocket fuel going after the story, but there's a unique product angle here that I think is interesting, and you're in charge of products and, and technology for the company, but you've also had a journey in, in the enterprise. You've, Splunk was a very successful company, MuleSoft, very successful SaaS company, sold to Salesforce, huge tower in San Francisco. There's a new kind of generation shift happening with cloud computing that's forcing enterprises to change their infrastructure. And this is beyond just backup and other things. Yeah. This is a, a generation, once in a generation shift yes. in B2B. How has it changed things? And you've seen, you've seen a lot of the, the enterprise action over the past decade or so and more. But right now it's more than ever. What's the big shift? And obviously cloud forces a lot of change. What's the impact of the customer? You know, I think there are two phases to that. I mean, there's one that we are, we are uh, serving a market. This, backup recovery market represents a massive area of investment for companies. I, I've seen stats that suggest that there's six X as much spend on storage infrastructure for the secondary uh, arena than there is for, for production grade systems. And so, uh, but yet this market just hasn't seen innovation since data domain. And So uh, tons of money, but nothing happening. Nothing happening. So we came in initially with a whole new, very customer centric approach that uh, delivered all of the complexity that this market had seen before, shrink wrapped into a modern era software platform running on commodity hardware. Our customers can be up and running in less than an hour. They can archive and leverage the cloud. And so it's driving both TCO benefits, agility of the business, and allowing them access to move workloads to the cloud, manage the cloud in ways that they had never seen before. And so I think certainly that has been one big part of the success of Rubrik, but I think more broadly on the cloud, um, we're seeing many companies are really in a hybrid mode. They are moving from on-prem, they're leveraging MSPs, they're starting to build certain businesses in the cloud, mm -hmm. and the ability to manage all that centrally in, in a way that is governed properly and allows them to extract real value from it is something that's really resonating for our customers. What was the reason why you joined Rubrik? I mean, everyone has a reason. I see you met Bitpole, you get to keeping in touch. Yeah. Um, was it the team, was it the technology? What was the one thing was the, that you were attracted to that put you over the top? One thing, I've got so many. The, um, that's the, the, <laughs> the most important thing. Yeah, I think I'm going to force you with three answers okay. on that one. You know, I, I fell in love with I'll Bit. I'll still ask you to rank them by All one, right, two, sounds three. Good. I'll, I'll end with the last okay, one on right. the product. Right. Uh, I fell in love with Bitpole, quite honestly. I mean, remarkable guy, incredibly humble such tenacity, such a focus on customers. The team that he's assembled to me was just so paramount. I wanted to be part of this organization. And honestly, I'm humbled to be sitting around the table with 
folks like Murray Demo, who's our CFO, and Mark Smith, our head of sales from Arista, and uh, you know, Kara Wilson, our CMO, and, and we just keep bringing these incredible individuals to the company to lead the org. I'm, I'm truly humbled to be sitting around the table with them. So that's, that excitement, by the way, goes all the way down. The folks that have been hired into the organization are quite remarkable. But the thing that really, from a product perspective, that really is exciting to me is that not only are we disrupting this $40 billion market in a way that's really connecting for our customers, we're doing it in a way that is thinking ahead. We're not treating this backup arena as some blob that's going to sit on tape somewhere. We're building it as part of an integrated management platform that then allows our customers to extract higher value services and, and insight from that in a way that they've never seen before. So Radar, is a, a, we've had some incredible innovation over the last four months that I've been with the company with the release of uh, Rubrik Alta 4.2, a new product, Radar, for ransomware protection. We've talked about our AWS competency and advancements there. But Radar is an example of a service that we are building on top of this data management platform that delivers higher value for our customers. And I am so excited about the exponential growth and value that we're going to deliver to our customers as we continue to deliver more of these services. Yeah, you get the technology, you have the great team. You know, the go-to-market's going to be interesting. You have this cloud, you got marketplaces, you got consumption by the users, the customers, if you will, on your end. Uh, it's changing, obviously SaaS is being a big part of it. How has the product roadmap shifted from classic old school product management to now? Because it has to be a service. The service is out there, still low commodity hardware. Software is driving the value. That's where the hardware gets sold. That's what the cloud gets sold on. It used to be the other way around. Your hardware drove what you can do with software. So that's, that's been true. flipped. Yes. How are you guys working that in, 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 in the equation? Software first, cloud first. I mean, how, how do you explain that to customers? Well, we, we were always a software company. And, um, and we built Rubrik as a very modern era, um, uh, expandable platform that runs on commodity hardware and can archive and move workloads to the cloud uh, at its core. I mean, our founders came from companies like Google and Facebook and had really uh, come from this world. And so um, our customers were able to get that value quickly and I think that was a big, big part of what attracted them to Rubrik. But if you really fast forward into the future, our, our vision is to have a ubiquitous centralized data management platform from which our customers can govern, manage, and, and uh, establish rules that, uh, that govern all of, their, all of their applications that they protect across cloud boundaries, across private clouds, traditional infrastructure, cloud workloads, and we, we really think that's connecting for our customers. Talk about the product roadmap. Obviously you're in charge of product and strategy. Obviously you have, a, you have a great market entry. The success has been documented. You guys have been one of the fastest growing companies in Silicon Valley. The past couple of years I've seen the success. You always have a big party at VMworld. It's your big show there, looking forward to this year. It's going to happen again this year. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there's a yeah, big, big, uh, big performer there coming um, last year. It was great to have to see the Warriors uh, there. So, but product is interesting because if you're a startup, you want to have a beachhead secure a core positioning, and then look at kind of holistically what the customers might want. Yeah. Can you share some insight into what that product roadmap is and how are you guys fortifying your core and what are you adding onto the roadmap? Yeah, you know the first thing that we did when we came out was to provide this capability to protect your data, make it really easy to use, archive to the cloud, and we focused on VMware and hypervisors and it was very well received. And over the years we've expanded to support other other areas, other data, other applications. And so our strategy certainly is going to continue to do that with the vision of protecting all of our customers' applications and data regardless of where they reside, whether they are traditional infrastructure applications running on-prem in private clouds or new modern architectures that are running in the cloud, the ability to manage all of that, that's certainly going to continue to be one of the directions of the, Robert, of the roadmap strategy. The other is, as I mentioned, we're, we're not really looking at these protected images as black boxes or, or tape images. We're going to enable our customers to extract value out of them in a way that they haven't seen before by introspecting this data and revealing insights from it. Ransomware. So are, what's, yes. what's the current situation? So why can't they get that today? Well, I think typically these images are stored in a proprietary blob format and you can't really see much in there. You can't unlock it at you all. You can't unlock it and you don't really know much about what's even in the black box. And so we were, 
um, from the beginning, we started capturing metadata that allows customers to classify this data and get insight into, well, what applications are actually running in this yeah. particular snapshot. And, and so we continue to extract that level of value that is really connecting for our customers and allowing them to uh, resurrect, move workloads, introspect uh, for compliance reasons or otherwise in ways that I think are just really important. Yeah, things like GDPR, for instance, alone Absolutely. Is, a, is a great use case. Absolutely. All right, so what's the big picture? If you had to go talk to your, your friends and say, hey, I joined Rubrik, and they say, hey, you know, never, I've never heard of Rubrik, what do they do? You say, you don't say backup company, you say data company. How do you describe the company? I talk about a company that's providing data management for non-production systems uh, and allowing customers to extract value in ways that they haven't seen before. And I, I think, candidly, John, when I have, I've been very fortunate to work for some great companies, I have never seen an opportunity as exciting and as big as what Rubrik represents. Uh, it's just so important to our customers. Everybody has to protect their apps and we're able to do it in a way that's going to allow them to extract so much more value. And when just, was your official start date? You started, what, a couple months April ago? April 1st. April 1st, yeah. so four months roughly, yeah. Exactly. I'm and your thrilled. impression, it's your impression as you walk in, what's the, what's the DNA, what's the vibe of the company, if you had to describe the DNA of the company? You know, I, I'm really thrilled. I am really thrilled to be part of this organization. There's a deep sense of culture. One of the things that attracted me uh, uh, early on was uh, there, there was an article written about Bitbull talking about radical transparency, open boardroom meetings. I'd never seen that before. And you know what it's about? It's about employee empowerment. He is so committed to that, to making sure that we are able to set everybody up to deliver their best in the organization. And I think it's spot on. It's why we're innovating so quickly. It's why we're attracting such top talent at all levels of the organization. And it's why I'm so confident about the future of this company. That's great. You know, one of the things too that I want to get your thoughts on because you're seeing cloud disrupt a lot of things and it's certainly a great opportunity for you guys. And you know, we're seeing it out there when we talk to the end user enterprises is that you know, the common answer is we know cloud's there, we got to go there. But the one thing that's interesting is they all say cloud, no matter what we do, when we, when we talk about cloud for them, it, it makes them change their infrastructure. Yes. On premises and what they're doing in the cloud. So it's a rethinking of things. So that's one. So that's opening up new markets. So the question for you have is, as you guys look at new markets, things yeah. like public sector, for instance, we're seeing, I wrote a story today in Silicon Angle that Oracle's challenging Amazon um, for the Department of Defense deal. So public sector and global public sector, not just in the United States, is a very interesting market. Uh, how do you guys do and say that market? I know you're strong in the enterprise, but what's the public sector angle? Are you guys competing there? Are you winning? What's the story? We are, um, and you know, I would say uh, there are multiple motions. In addition to the public sector example, we're seeing a lot of global 2000 organizations moving to manage service providers. And so that's a, an example of a private cloud model that uh, really works for a lot of folks and federal uh, organizations as well, really looking to have a tenant well secured service uh, model for their various agencies. And that is very aligned with, with what we're doing. In fact, in our Alta 4.2 release, we talked about Envoy that really advances how service providers can, and managed service providers even within organizations, can actually uh, enable more self-service and capability in that regard. Yeah. We see these, these uh, uh, varying segments. And so you see public sector as an opportunity for you guys? No doubt. In fact, if you look at the rubric customer base today, it really spans the gamut of, of markets across the board, including public sector, uh, and uh, state and local agencies as well. Well, we know you got a, a great relationship with Amazon Web Services, AWS. You're a competency, comp competency partner of them, which is the highest um, award or level you can get. What is your relationship with the other clouds? Google, Microsoft, Alibaba, and others. What's, how do you guys uh, relate to those other clouds? We, our customers uh, uh, run on all platforms, and we, uh, Rubrik does uh, have uh, a relationship with, with Microsoft, certainly. Uh, in fact, we have a co-sell agreement with them. We support Azure uh, uh, at a relatively deep level. Same thing with Google Cloud. We enable our customers to... You're agnostic on cloud, basically. We are agnostic, and we, the point is that uh, I think every one of these cloud platforms has their own unique angle and value, and we want to enable our customers to really leverage the platform of their choice. So a lot of young people are looking at career choices and some of the jobs are right. out there that haven't been invented yet. Um, as school starts to figure out quickly, starting to see computer science, women in tech is booming. Yeah. You're seeing a lot of different new kinds of jobs around data science, for instance. What do you advise young people who are either in high school or college who are thinking about careers? You don't have the classic, I'm going to be a software engineer, you could be a software developer, a software yeah. artist. There's different jobs in management, marketing, all kinds of different scopes. What's the current uh, track that you would recommend people to explore if they were interested in getting in tech? 
You know, I, I think there's, it's remarkable to me to see how the internship programs have evolved uh, and how active they are. I was initially recruited into Oracle directly out of college and it's a very, uh, a very uh, regimented process of recruiting yeah. from college. Well, now you've got these internships and I, I tell you some of the interns that have worked with companies that I've been a part of have just impressed the hell out of me. So that's a, just a great just way. To get in. To get in, yeah. to, to see what it's about and to have an opportunity to add value and, and every single time one of those interns does something remarkable and it happens all the time, there is an offer on the table for them to come back to. So I think that's a, a very good way uh, with many of these organizations to get in. I mean, it's so in. interesting. I mean, we do a lot of interviews and, and there's no classic cookie cutter job anymore. I think you're starting to see in, uh, interdisciplinary opportunities that are coming up. Yeah. Some computer science, a little bit of uh, sociology or business mixed. It's, it's very interesting, it's uh, almost an alchemy of different projects out there that people can get involved in. Absolutely. Open and source certainly is a big one. And it's fun because um, when, we, when we get new college grads, we just give them an opportunity to do a lot of different things yeah. and rotations and that helps them also sort of get a sense of where their passion lies and what they want to do and, and it's exactly the right thing to demand yeah. as you're coming into the workforce. It's interesting, at Google Cloud, I was talking with some folks over there and, and you know, the women in tech conversation and opportunity recognition and to, to level up. There's so, not, so many new opportunities that anyone of any gender or race can come in and quickly level up. Yes. I mean, because it's so new, the technology with cloud is kind of interesting. Yes, I mean, I think it all comes down to your personal ability and commitment and work ethic and drive and there's uh, there's no 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 end in sight to what's possible. Shai, well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to see you and congratulations on your new role Thank at you, Rubrik. John. Great company right down the street here in Palo Alto. Uh, Rubrik, new Senior Vice President of Product and Strategy here inside theCUBE. For CUBE Conversation, I'm John Furrier here in Palo Alto in our studios. Thanks for watching.